Hi, welcome to this talk from Anity Ministry. I uh, hope you're well. Today we want, I want to look at an amazing passage um, in Titus, a book in the New Testament that we probably don't always teach from or look at maybe as much as we should. Um, and so we're going to be looking at a little passage from Titus 3. But before I do, I want to tell you a story uh, about my childhood. So maybe some of you can relate to this, some of you won't. But um, as, as I grew up as a child, I, for some reason, really didn't like getting too dirty or too muddy. You know, you see some kids that love to jump in puddles and stuff, but I really wasn't one of those children. It's not that I hated it or couldn't cope, but I would normally just, by preference, try to keep myself fairly clean, my clothes clean, my hands clean, I wouldn't want to get covered in mud. And actually, I had an uncle who we were staying with for a, for a few days on a, on a holiday when I was probably about eight or nine years old, and he saw how like tidy and, well not that tidy, but I guess how clean I like to be, and he, he thought, ah, he needs to be, um, that needs to be interrupted, he needs to sort of come to terms with that and get beyond it. So actually, one walk we went on as a family, um, unbeknownst to me, about halfway through the walk, he, f he found some like, you know, mud in a puddle on the floor, and he went uh, and put his hand in it, so his hand was covered in mud, and he came up behind me, um, and he... And before I could see what was going on, he grabbed my hand, like really like kind of shook my hand, um, and then let go. And there was all this mud on my hand. And reality, that's not a big thing. And actually, he actually, I think, had a good, good motive behind it. But I can remember as a nine-year-old or something, seeing all this mud on my hand and being just, I don't know if I was truly upset, but I was just a little bit uncomfortable and annoyed that I then had all this mud on my hand and it was going to be maybe 45 minutes until we got back home. So I was going to have to walk with this mud. And I was just, you know, a little bit annoyed by it, but, but, but coming to terms with it. I can remember, this is a very strange like I remember, so I can remember as a kid getting back into the house after we'd finished this walk and the mud had got all dry on my hands and just being really, really like pleased to be able to wash my hands, wash them clean and, uh, and have them come back to normal. I'm not, you might think from that story that I'm like a germaphobe or incredibly tidy. I, I'm probably not those things, but as a kid, I just like to be clean. And I think actually we can all relate to some form of enjoying the feeling of being clean. Some of us will know when we will do jobs where we get quite a bit, bit of dirt on us, that sort of thing, and we're, we're fine with it. But I think everyone, whether you're like me or maybe not quite as dramatic as I was as a kid, we like the feeling of being able to wash mud off our hands, being able to have a shower when we know that we're covered in sweat. Like We innately like that. And what's really interesting about this passage is that this passage will tell us that the only way for us to be able to wash evil off us, to wash sin off us, the only way that we can wash sort of spiritual selfishness off us is actually through the Holy Spirit. And I would encourage each of us as we look at this that that's what God wants to do to us today. He wants to wash off us so that we know a greater cleaning and a continual um, cleaning um, of our souls, our spirits, from selfishness, from our from evil, from, from flesh. Um, and actually the only way to actually truly, moment by moment, have it washed off us is through engaging with the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're going to look at here through Titus 3. So I'm just going to read a few verses from Titus 3, um, starting at verse 3. So this is a, a letter from Paul, and it says, At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through, the, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. So that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things, so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. That's a, a, a great little passage in Titus 3 there, um, all about... It's really all about the gospel, and it centers on some. Key, it talks about some key truths, which I feel like for today and and, and the context we're in now, and what life like is like now, it's really good to remind ourselves. So I just want to make three points from from that those verses that I just read. And the first one, which is really a gospel point, is that 
Jesus saves us, we cannot save ourselves. Jesus saves us, we cannot save ourselves. Well, I just read it, Titus 3, it begins by saying that we will once, we will all, which includes, obviously, Paul was writing it at, about himself and that those he was writing to, but it includes us today. We were all deceived and enslaved by passions and desires. So we were all, and every member of the human race, has, has been enslaved and under the power of evil or selfishness. Like, that is innate to all of us. And we know that that's true when we look at the world for even a short period of time. So that's what the, the state we were in. But then it says, verse 4, when the kindness and love of God, our Saviour, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done. That's just, so the reality of what it is to be a Christian, to follow Jesus, is to know that he saved us. We cannot save ourselves. And that word saved actually is that word sozo, which is a beautiful word. It basically means to be delivered, to be preserved, to be uh, made whole, to be taken out of danger. And Jesus does that from our sin and from our selfishness. He takes us out of our danger so that we can be free from the destruction that sin would lead in our lives. That we could know God. But also it takes us out of destruction of, um, of, of evil and, and evil forces that can engage with us and, and, and impact us. But the key thing is that we can't do it ourselves. Jesus, our Saviour, as it says, can do it. And I think that's really an important thing to remind ourselves. It's a basic Christian principle. Remind ourselves in this time because what's happening with coronavirus and what's happening in society now is we all, I think, if we're not careful, are recognising that we want control of more and more things. We recognise that there are dangers out there. For example, you know, nowadays it's bizarre that we could be saying this in 20, you know, 20, but we, we know there's dangers out there. If we go to the grocery store, we're probably in, quote-unquote, slightly more danger, certainly of coronavirus, and catching it than we might be in our homes. Or if we go out and about like, on a crowded tube and there's coughing or on a bus, we know that there's danger, and, we, and all of the, sort of the media and the narrative is, hey, do whatever you can to control yourself, to, be, to, be, um, to, to deliver yourself out of danger. And obviously, all of that is really important. We should be being sensible and following that guidance. But I actually think that beneath it, because it can often come with a fear mindset, we can actually accidentally allow it to not just be about coronavirus, but in our lives, we can actually take on the mindset, oh, I, I save myself, I can deliver myself out of danger in more, much more things than just a virus, but to do with how we live and orientate our lives. And actually, this passage, the gospel reminds us, we can't save ourselves. You and I can't save ourselves out of any danger. We were enslaved to sin, to brokenness, to our own bad passions, until Jesus saved us. So let's remind ourselves that actually we need Jesus as our saviour. And actually, in all circumstances, we can't deliver ourselves out of danger. Today, with coronavirus and all the reality of that, I can't save myself out of danger, but Jesus is our saviour. He is the one that does that. He is the one that saves us, and he is in control. And so I just really encourage you, remind yourself regularly that that is true. Because otherwise, because of the way culture is freaking out about what's going on in our lives right now, which is really important and significant, we can actually sometimes um, accidentally overdo the thought that we're in control. Jesus is in control. He's all that saves us. That's the gospel. So that's the first point. The second point, probably maybe the key point from this, is that the Holy Spirit must wash and renew us. The Holy Spirit must wash and renew us. So then in verse 5 it says, you know, Jesus saved us, not because of righteous things which we had done, but because of his mercy. And then it says, he saved us. So this is how. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy, by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Saviour. So it's interesting that the Holy Spirit is then in this passage put as a really important thing connected to the Gospel. It's not just Jesus died on a cross for us and that's, that's the, the only part of saving that God does for us. That is crucial. That is the cornerstone. But actually, it goes to say, he saved us through the washing and of renewal and rebirth through the Holy Spirit. And actually, that tells us a really important passage here, that the Holy Spirit isn't just for charismatics. The Holy Spirit isn't just for those that are... Um, maybe particularly extroverted and so kind of will engage with the Holy Spirit because it's something that's exuberant or passionate. No, the Holy Spirit is the way that we are saved. 
renewal, washing and rebirth by the Holy Spirit is how we're saved. And actually this passage would suggest it's the only way that we're saved. Because of what Jesus did our Saviour, and then through this, that's how we're saved. Um, so that tells me we can't merely have an intellectual understanding of the Holy Spirit. We can't just believe in the Holy Spirit or believe in Jesus. We actually need to begin a process and continually have a process. So it says it's the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. I actually looked up that word washing in the Greek, and it means washing, but it also particularly has a connotation of, of a bath. Um, and if you think about that, it's interesting that you and I are called to be washed or bathed by the Holy Spirit. That is a sense of, again, really, whenever you have a bath, you plunge in, you're, you're submerged. And that is what the Holy Spirit actually needs to do for us, for us to be saved. Needs to do for us to be cleansed and for have all these enslaved passions and desires washed off us. But then the key thing we'll all know is, if, if we're covered in mud, if I return to that analogy, if I was covered in mud, just knowing that there's a shower up, upstairs in the, in, the, in the bathroom isn't enough to make me clean. I don't just need to know that it's there. I actually have to engage and do it. And certainly we know as, basically as humans, we need to be washed regularly. We need a bath all the time because we get dirty all the time. So in the same way for the Holy Spirit, we, don't, we can't just know that the Holy Spirit exists or know that he's part of something connected with God. We need to engage and allow a washing, a shower, a bath thing to happen and allow it to happen all the time because we get, go through life and get mess, messy and dirt on us, as it were, all the time. But I love that it says he poured out the Holy Spirit generously through Jesus Christ our Saviour. So it's Jesus' desire for us to be washed. And that word, um, renewal and rebirth, they're massive words. The only other time that that word um, renewal is, is in, in the Bible, in the same way in the Greek, is in that amazing Romans 12 verse. Do not be conformed by the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that we know our minds being renewed is a long process. Being renewed by the Holy Spirit is a continual process. And so my encouragement to us today is, are we allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and wash us and do that again? And, Today, in this, in this context of most of us spending a lot more time at home, it's a really good time to allow the Holy Spirit to wash some dirt off us, to wash off maybe, maybe we struggle with relationships, maybe we struggle with gossip, maybe we struggle with insecurity about, around others. Well, God's literally removed some of those barriers from you right, and us right now because we, we're at home all the time, so we don't have the same amount of people around us. In this moment, I feel like the Holy Spirit really wants to wash more things off us as we engage with the Holy Spirit so that actually we will be more and more like him, more and more renewed. And it's a continual process. So in, allow the Holy Spirit to do that for you and for me today. So that's kind of the key point. The third, very final, quicker point is that actually Holy Spirit renewal allows us to model God's goodness. Holy Spirit renewal, this process we've been talking, us, talking about, allows us to model God's goodness. So then Paul goes on to finish by saying, after, after he's talked about the Holy Spirit and the hope that we have then of eternal life as we are saved, he says, and I want to stress these things to you in verse 8, so that those who trust in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. Jesus once said that only God is good. But it's interesting that Paul here is saying that we are called to do good. And I would suggest that the way that we are able to do good is because the Holy Spirit, we, we allow so much of the Holy Spirit, God in spiritual form, that dwells in us and cleanses us moment by moment. We so engage with that process that we become doing what God does. We become doing good. And we're called not just to be renewed and encounter the Holy Spirit and even experience the Holy Spirit, although I believe we, we, we are able to do all those things, but we're called to do it so that we would be like God and do good to do actual good to those around us, to do actual good in society and to our neighbours. And so I encourage you that, you and I, we have all that we need to actually walk out and perform acts of God's goodness. But actually it's through the Holy Spirit that, and by allowing him to renew us and wash us and give us rebirth that we, we get there. So let's just, um, let's just finish by, I'm going to say uh, a just a prayer, just asking the Holy Spirit to come and, be, and continue to renew us. And we're probably all in different states about that. Uh, but I'm just going to pray that the Holy Spirit might come and that this process, this saving of our souls would happen. So Holy Spirit, I pray for each of us. I pray for myself. I pray for all of those watching. Holy Spirit, that you might wash 
over us by the, by the power of, and the will of Jesus through the Holy Spirit to give us increased and, re, and new rebirth and regeneration. To wash off those desires and, and selfish um, passions that we might have. To wash off us. Any of those things that we all can struggle with, we all do struggle with. God, in this season, wash it off us. Renew us. Holy Spirit, so that we might be fit and ready to do your goodness, to, to model your goodness, to act in your goodness. So Holy Spirit, we just welcome you now. Come and be poured out generously over myself and all of us watching. Fill us. Conform us to you, Jesus. Wash greed off us. Wash selfishness off, off us. Wash lust off us. Holy Spirit. Wash insecurities off us. Renew us. Renew our minds. Make us more like Jesus. Make us know that it's Jesus alone that saves us. Help us now to trust in you, Holy Spirit. Come, we welcome you. We welcome you. Be, be, our, be our spiritual shout today, Holy Spirit. And help us to continue to trust in you and continue to be renewed by you. Yeah, amen. Just, just as, a, as a way of sort of responding and, and continuing this, this theme just a bit as we come towards finishing, this, this is a really simple song that, that actually I wrote uh, a few years ago now. It's, it's basically all about allowing the Holy Spirit to come and touch us. So, um, I'm going to sing this, and, and it's really a prayer. It's a song that's a prayer. So I pray that God will continue to be doing what we read in Titus 3 as we, as we sing this together.
just continue to be responding to God and while John was speaking the Holy Spirit reminded me in John chapter 1 Jesus when he was baptized in the river Jordan he was immersed in the water of the river Jordan and it says in John 1 that as Jesus came out of the water the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove and remained upon him and John said the person upon whom the Holy Spirit came down and remained, is the one who will baptise with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so Lord, as we can continue to respond to you, Lord, Father, we thank you that Jesus so longs to give to each and every of his followers the person, the presence, the power, the washing, the rebirth, the cleansing, the refreshing of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we thank you that Jesus came to baptize us, to immerse us with the fullness of his Holy Spirit, that we might be children of God. So, Holy Spirit, I ask and pray that you would come and touch each one of us afresh. Lord, may we be like a glass of water that is getting filled and filled and filled with water until we are overflowing, Lord God. May the power of your Spirit come upon each one of us, Lord. Fill us to overflowing that we might know that fullness, that rebirth, that baptism of the Holy Spirit that Jesus longs to give and to bestow upon us. And may we be the people of God that live in the fullness and in the power of the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, come now, flood us, strengthen us, encourage us, and may your love and goodness and the presence of the Spirit flow from our lives in all that we are and all that we do. And may the Holy Spirit be God's empowering presence in our lives today and always in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen.